Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts, and hallelujah, spring is finally here. So this month's Block Lotto Challenge is called Memories of a Churn Dash. We're going to make it fresh, we're going to make it bright, and we're going to make it modern. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. So butter churning has always been a woman's job. And sometime about 200 years ago, some woman was churning butter and noticed the stamp that that dash made in the middle of the butter. And she probably said, I can quilt this. And not only did she quilt it, she named it and she documented it. So today we have the classic churn dash block. And there are three rules. First, your block has to finish nine inches, so it's unfinished at nine and a half. Number two, it has to be made from Kona White, Kona Tiger Lily, and Kona Bright Periwinkle. And three, it must have some memory of the classic churn dash block in it. So why do we do a block lotto challenge? You may be looking at this block and going, eh, not me, but we call it challenge for a reason. Challenges are all about doing things that you don't normally do, whether you're using colors that aren't in your crayon box or you don't know how to do. The great thing about block lotto challenges is you get to experiment with them. You get to try them out and you don't have to commit to a full quilt. And more importantly, it's something that everybody in the guild should do. That's how the guild is stronger, when we all have a shared history. So the first way we're gonna make this block modern is the colors. Every year, Kona and Pantone both choose colors of the year. Kona's tiger lily is warm, rich, and mid-century modern. Pantone's ultraviolet is cool, complex, and reminds us of the limitless night sky. And this year, they go together perfectly. They are in different quadrants of the color wheel and paired with white. There's good, strong contrast. This is a very modern color selection. The first block we're going to do is the classic churn dash. So the size of the block that we're making for this month's challenge is finished at nine inches. You can download the pattern from the Toronto Modern Quilt Guild website. It's also available in the file section on our Facebook page. Cut four inch squares, two white, two tiger lily. Cut two inch by three and a half inch rectangles, four white, four ultraviolet, and one three and a half inch square. Follow the pattern to make the half square triangles and the rectangle blocks. And then we lay them out like so. And this is your classic churn dash. But we can still take it up a notch. Let's move the colors around. Let's play a little bit and have a little fun. You can make the colors balanced, you can make them asymmetric, you can just mix them up any which way you feel like. The second way we're going to make this block modern is proportions. We can take our classic grid and make the proportions larger or smaller or even asymmetrical or even reduce it. So for this method you're going to need graph paper, a pencil and a ruler. You can truly use any kind of paper but I choose to use graph paper to make the calculations easier. So take your ruler and mark out a nine inch square. I like to mark the inches along the sides and the top. Draw two horizontal lines and two vertical lines across your square. This example will be symmetrical. Now draw your rectangle blocks and draw your half square triangle blocks and now you measure them up. If you're using graph paper, you can just count the squares, but you can use your ruler if you're using plain paper. To calculate the cutting dimensions for your rectangles, you add a half an inch to both the height and the width of your measured size. For triangles, you cut a square one inch larger than the height and one inch larger than the width, and then cut it in half along the diagonal. When you are doing half square rectangles, you do a stack of two, then cut on a diagonal, take the top layer from one side and put it on the bottom. Your top fabrics will be one pair and your bottom fabrics will be another pair. 
Your points do not line up neatly, but will overhang at least a quarter of an inch on either side. Again, have fun, experiment, anything goes. And don't forget to play with other color arrangements. Toss them around, mix them up, use some negative space. The third way we're gonna make this block modern is we're gonna make it wonky. This method, we're gonna use our graph paper for paper piecing. Draw out your grid and color in your pieces wonky, then cut your blocks out. You may even choose to make your grid wonky. Just two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. Just remember to add a quarter of an inch seam allowance to the edge of the paper when you're trimming. And voila! Don't forget to play with color placement and negative space. So we've done three things to make this block modern. Can you think of any more? There's curves, there's matchstick quilting, you can put it on point, and we haven't even talked about playing with that dash block in the middle. So go on, give it a try, do your best. Let it take you where it wants to take you. Experiment, even if you think it looks like a dog's breakfast, bring it into the next guild meeting and share your story. So what did I learn making this block? Well, one, if you didn't know it before, always press to the dark side. And two, I found I had a lot more fun when I just let go of the grid and just did anything goes. Having the colors chosen for me and not having to curate each block, it was a lot of fun. So I hope you have as much fun as I did making these blocks. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the video. Please like this video. You can also find me on Instagram or at justgetitdonequilts.com. If you have any questions or any suggestions for another block, please put them in the comments below. I'll see you next time.